Hi, I'm Juliana Meek with my dad, Bill Meek, from Harmony Meek Gallery of Naples, Florida, and we're going to talk about Jimmy Ernst. Well, there's some things that are you're just lucky to have happen, and I, I love my wife dearly, and she works here as a as a as worked as an assistant director as long as she's been the artists love her because she pays artists. She <laughs> the artists love her because she pays immediately, uh, but uh, she's not an art historian. So one day, um, uh, <clears throat> about 1979, I think it was. Um, she feels a call from, uh, well, I feel a call from Jimmy Ernst. Hmm. And I thank my lucky stars because we get calls from artists all the time. And, and your mother has a certain way of handling artists she doesn't know. Are you in any museum collections and uh, are you famous at all? And, I, and if she had said that to Jimmy Ernst, he would have hung up the phone on her immediately. <laughs> but I answered the phone. And said, I've heard a lot about your gallery, and I'd, I'd like to come down and discuss whether you'd like to represent me. And he had just uh, um, built a beautiful studio in Nokomis, south of Sarasota, uh, along the Keys of south of Sarasota. And so he was technically now a Florida artist, even though his history goes back to the early 40s. He was really escorted out of. Uh, out of, uh, out of Nazi Germany, uh, he would have been killed. I mean, his mother was Jewish. His father was obviously the world famous decadent artist Max Ernst, according to Hitler. So the, Peggy Guggenheim really saved both of their lives. Unfortunately, his mother died in, at Dachau. And um, even though she had written for the Nazi party, she, in the early 30s, she had written to support a Nazi uh, uh, party member uh, getting elected, and uh, but she didn't know the, the true scope of what they were all about until it was too late, of course. But Jimmy became part of the irascible 18. He was one of that whole group of, of famous artists and, uh, uh, that were launched in the early 50s, and uh, he had a tremendous reputation as one of the great abstract artists, and uh, his and yet he's not really a paint thrower. He's not really an abstract expressionist in that vein. His works are very precise, and it's amazing. I went to a studio in Nokomis, and also went to a studio in uh, in the Hamptons. And th this painting, you, you just by the surface, you you don't you you think it's just white paint on other colors. There are probably twenty five layers of paint. The paintings come from deep within, and and there's layer after layer of paintings and intricate detail. So, so while he's an abstract painter, he really is a detailed artist. Mm -hmm. Amazing paintings. And they're structured. There are, there, some of them almost have a web-like appearance. And he, was always, he always loved doing uh, black on black, glossy black, glossy black paint versus flat black paint, mm -hmm. and white on white paintings. And he told me that he really did this uh, so that they couldn't be viewed in books. Uh, they are printed in books, but you really can't get the concept of them until you see them in person. He wanted people to see art in person, not in books. Uh, but I thank my lucky stars that I answered that phone call and he came down and we hit it off immediately. I did a retrospective for him. I loaned the show to the Butler Institute of American Art with a big catalog. Uh, um, and I did other exhibitions for him. And then uh, he was uh, so immersed in this turmoil within himself of what his, what his uh, life had been like uh, and uh, his mother's inability to get out of Germany. And he wrote a book, an autobiographic book about a not so still life. And the, and the book was being published, and we were going to be doing a show. Uh, and, but, I, but more importantly, I knew he was coming down to Naples for some reason. And so I contacted the publisher of this book. I said, uh, when is the book going to be released? So it's going to be released in about two months. I said, is there any chance I can get a box of 30 uh, books that are... Uh, uh, 
kind of advanced copy, no stuff in release, uh, uh, because he's coming down to Naples, and I'd like him to sign them. Mm -hmm. And there's not a lot of opportunities to get him to sign. Mm -hmm. So they said, sure, we'll send you down, but don't don't tell anybody about it. Uh, don't make a big deal about it because it hasn't been officially released yet. So I got this box of 30 books, and <clears throat> and Jimmy Hurts came down to, to visit us. It's about an you know, hour and a half, two-hour drive. Mm -hmm. And uh, sitting on top of the desk is this box of books. And he walks into the gallery, and he says... Uh, how did you get to my books? I said, I only have one copy of it myself. He said, how did you get these books? I said, well, I have my ways. I just called the publisher and he's well, he had explained to him that you're coming down. I said, will you sign them? And I, at that time I had seven clients of his work. So it was just the beginning of our relationship. This is about 1984, uh, or yeah, probably the fall of, probably November, December, 1983. And so he signed the paint, signed the books, and he signed personalized the ones to the my clients using their name. And I said, uh, just sign the rest of them. And he obviously signed one for uh, 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 me and and Barb. And uh, and then he went back after we transacted whatever he wanted to do at that time. Maybe he brought down some paintings. I can't remember, but the but uh, it wasn't. But a month later or so that I get a call from Dallas Ernst's wife saying, I don't know how to say this, but Jimmy just died. And I, and I had to, I, you know, I, I couldn't believe it because I thought we were gonna be on such a great role with his, with his work. He had just started a new series of paintings, which was completely different, uh, based upon his fascination with the Everglades. He did a whole called Sea of Grass series. He did them in multicolored. This is one on the cover. This painting is huge. This painting is, I, I think this is in the Museum of Fine Arts in St. Petersburg, um, but it's it's probably 12 or 14 feet long. But so he did them in multicolored. He did a couple of white on white, and it did quite a few in black on black. And I actually sold one of the black on black paintings many years later. We sold we sold to a client right off the bat, and her son bought it back to resell, and I sold that painting that's now in the collection of Florida Art at the, the, the Daytona uh, Museum of Arts and Sciences, and there's, a, there's an entire separate building of Florida Art by, by the uh, 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 special collectors that live in that area that built a collection of Florida Art. And so he's one of the contemporary collection, part of their contemporary collection. So I have now 23 books signed by Jimmy Ernst. And I, I without hesitation, I, I asked Dallas, I said, it's been a couple of months, have you gotten any other books? And he said, no, they haven't been released yet. He said, you know, I have, tw I have 23 signed books. And I can imagine that you have 23 really close friends that would like to have this book that would mean something to them. And, and she, she said, that's a, so kind of you. And I boxed them up and shipped them up to her. And, you know, I essentially, I, I, I didn't even ask her for the cost of the books back. I mean, I just, uh, it did it, I just did it out of pure kindness. And she accepted in that, in that, in that way. And she was so touched that we had a, a very strong relationship uh, from that point on. Uh, that just solidified whatever she thought of me, that um, I, I wasn't interested in the almighty dollar. I was interested in her friends and Jimmy's friends. Mm -hmm. so. Very nice.